Hello and welcome back to my laboratory. Last week we discussed creating a Robocop out of magic cards, and this week we're going to look at another film with some very heavy-handed symbolism, but probably on an entirely different level of quality. If you've already checked the title of the video, you'll know that we're talking about Birdemic! Shock and terror? Shock and awe? Shock and... I forget the subtitle, I should know the subtitle. So mechanically, this deck is much, much simpler. And in fact, one of the most interesting things about it is its colors. Now we're going to be playing this deck blue-black, and what you'll notice about this combination, if you've ever spent some time magic deck building, is that, first off, blue tends to be the archetypal control color. It's all about slow builds and reactive spells and controlling your opponent's side of the board, and black can go either way, it can be a very aggressive color if you pair it with red, and it can also be a very control color when you pair it with black. Blue-black especially tends to be a very, very slow buildy, controlly, tricksy sort of deck. But we're not going to be playing it like that, because I, as a huge fan of aggro-style decks, have built a blue-black creature-y aggro deck that essentially creates a whole bunch of really cheap, really low-level birds with flying and just keeps swarming them at your opponents, like some kind of epidemic of birds. And you would combine together to make Birdemic. Um, so very simply, the mechanic we're going to be playing around the most with in this deck is flying, um, which should give you a hint as to how simple this deck actually functions. Um, we're going to be combining blue flying creatures with some black sort of land degradation and, and enemy creature suppression spells to make sure that he has nothing that can really fight back against the onslaught of birds we're going to be summoning. Now as far as birds go, I would say that blue and white are probably the two colors for birds. There are probably a couple in green, and there's actually a fair number in black. I've picked blue and black because I like their interaction for this, but you can do it blue-white, you can do it white-black. There are different combinations that you can do. There are even a couple of red birds if you really want to go out that way. So there are a couple different ways you can do it, I'm just going to show you kind of the way I did it, and how you can kind of replicate it on your own. Now, if you're just going to be playing this deck casually with some friends, one card I absolutely recommend is Carnivorous Death Parrot. He's got flying, but you do have to say a quirky little saying at the beginning of your upkeep, otherwise you get sacrificed. But, like, look at him. He's a parrot with a bloody stump of a leg in his mouth. He is the Bird's Revenge-like card. But, of course, if you're dealing with Legacy or Standard, you don't want him because he's wildly illegal. What I like about birds is that they tend to be cheap and common. So you can put like four Welkin turns in there, they only cost two mana and they're two ones. So if you get a bunch of those out, that's a, some very, very quick attacks you could be doing. Um, Black also has some cards like Carrion Crow. Carrion Crow isn't perfect for this because they come onto the field tapped, so it does slow you down a little bit. Um, and it does kind of ruin the sort of quick pace that you've got, but they do look really cool, and they are two twos, um, so they can be very useful to you in a pinch. Um, it's also nice to have some cards like Nefalia Seakite, um, which has Flash, so he could be on the field sort of whenever you need him to, um, even if it's on your opponent's turn, so there's kind of always that sort of surprise sort of uh, birds element, um, just birds coming out of nowhere to, to swarm is kind of the effect that you're going for. Or a card like Cathari Screecher, um, which has Unearth, which means that you can actually play him from your graveyard um, to give him the sort of like uh, unstoppable undead bird effect. I also like cards like Strixes, like this Tide Hollow Strix here. There'll be a couple more in the deck that you'll see. They're blue-black. He has flying and death touch, so he's very formidable for keeping your opponent's side of the field under control while you sort of um, aggressively attack him with your swarm of birds. One mechanic that's going to help you a lot here is a draw mechanic. Kind of like this other Strix, Baleful Strix. Uh, whenever he enters the field, you can draw a card. And what's nice about that is the more you're drawing, the more cards you're getting, and the faster you can start, start getting your swarm out. Um, so other cards that'll work for this are like Murder of Crows, which is just also fantastic thematically. Uh, whenever another creature dies, you may draw a card. Um, or Thieving Magpie, whenever he deals combat damage to an opponent, you also can draw a card. And this way you kind of are drawing a lot of birds and lands, hopefully, very quickly to sort of keep your, um, your swarm attacking. A card like Warden of the Evos Isle, which is a bird wizard, so he counts. Uh, he has flying, and creatures you're with flying cost one less colorless to cast, so that'll also help you get a lot of your creatures out much, much faster. Uh, so in addition to draw and sort of this flying swarm that you're creating, you're also going to be working a bit with suppression. And we'll look at this a lot more when the 
um, instants and sorceries start to come out. But you can have a card like uh, Capsho Kite Fins. I'm super hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, whenever him or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can tap a creature that your opponent controls, sort of to help them keep them from blocking. So even if he gets something with flying out, he's not going to be able to block with it if you tap it. A card like Death Gaze, Gaze, Death Gaze Cockatrice. God, that is hard to say. Also with flying and death touch, de the death touch. None of this is easy to say, apparently. Death touch. This also helps you keep your opponent under control because it's going to keep him from sort of attacking you back um, because he knows that you're just going to block with that death gaze cockatrice and uh, kill whatever creature he attacks. So he's going to be very, very hesitant to attack you. You do have some black cards out. You can have something like Parasitic Strix in your deck, uh, which will allow you to sort of steal two life from your opponent when he comes into the field. Or a card like Sage Owl is also very useful, because um, you could basically look at the top four cards of your library and arrange them into an order that allow you to play fast and hard. I also like this card, Rise of Eagles. It's a sorcery. It allows you to put two, 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 blur, bird, blur. God, this entire deck is a tongue twister. Rise of Eagles. 2-2 two, two birds, come onto the field, and then you can scry, so you can look at the top card of your deck and decide if that's a card that you want, and that'll be very, very useful for sort of putting together your attack. Now, if you actually manage to sit through Birdemic, you'll know it's all an allegory for how global warming is terrible and humans are the worst. So what I like is a card like Contaminated Ground, I think it fits the theme very well. Essentially, you're enchanting one of your opponent's lands, turning it into a swamp, and then whenever he taps that land, he loses two life. So now you are basically using pollution to remove his ability to tap his lands, and isn't that just metaphorically exactly what Birdemic is about? You'd enchant your land with this, and whenever you tap it, you can cause your opponent to lose three life. Now, in addition, I like having cards in here that sort of suppress your opponent. Uh, cards like Cast Into Darkness or Stab Wound, uh, which sort of punish your opponent for having creatures out by doing sort of negative effects to them, but not uh, in the same way a red deck might immediately try and get rid of them. Black cards will lower their ability to defend themselves um, and basically leave his cards in the field but make them super worthless. I also just like a card like Human Frailty because it's all about destroying human cards. It's not going to be useful for every deck, but just it looks very, very destroy all humans-y, and I think that's also kind of just the tone of Birdemic. And then I've just thrown in some other cards like Sleep and Encrust, which allow you to sort of tap your opponent's cards and keep them from blocking. Uh, Voyage's End, or Asphyxiate, um, one of which will return a card to your opponent's hand unless you scry one, or destroy an untapped creature, both of which just kind of allow you to, to keep your opponent on, their, on his toes. Or her toes. So that's the Birdemic deck. Uh, if you have another deck like it that you think would do much better than mine, you're probably right, so talk to me about it in the comments. Ignore my boiler. Make sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and all that nonsense. And feel free to leave us any other suggestions for other things you'd like to see us try and build some decks around. And if you do happen to play one of these decks in a Legacy or maybe even a standard tournament, I haven't looked through cons too much to see if there's something that would fit, let us know how it goes. I'd love to see how this deck actually performs out in the wild. I don't have anything to condescendingly do like I did the, the coffee. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to stare at you until you either click the subscribe button, which I'll probably put like there. Or you can watch another video. It's like one click, dude. Like, come on, do it for us.